Hi everyone, this is Kate Warnock, the Social Media Manager for Guidewell. I have with me today Lee Shapiro in the Guidewell Insights Lounge. Welcome to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. Thank Lee. you so much, Kate. Well, Lee is the managing partner for Seven Wire Ventures, and I'm so glad to have you here today because I think you're going to have a very interesting perspective to share with us, especially your thoughts on MetaFuture and, and a couple things more specific to your own background. So let's talk a little bit about Seven Wire Ventures. Um, researching your company, I see that you have focused specifically on three sectors. Um, healthcare, education, and the energy industries. Those are pretty diverse you know, fields to cover. I'm wondering if there's something that they all have in common that you all address. So part of our focus at Seven Wire is on using technology to transform business process. And what we look for are industries where technology has been underutilized or where there's broken processes. So take, for example, healthcare. Um, when we first started in healthcare technology many years ago, we went into physician offices and the most complex piece of equipment they were using to manage relationships with patients was a fax machine. Right. And so we actually started to put networks into physician offices and help them use our software. We almost realized that we were in the change management business, not the software business. Moving to education, we see striking parallels. You have a consumer, like a patient, here in this case a student, who wants to use technology, who probably lives the rest of their lives in a digital world, mm -hmm. yet they're put into an analog environment when it relates to their education. And so we try to find ways to bring technology to address those challenges, look for efficiencies, and by creating those efficiencies, we hope our portfolio companies will be creating value as well. Well, terrific. Well, I know that one of the companies that you're working with now is Livongo Health, um, Livongo Health, and they help people manage their chronic diseases so that they're able to really live a healthier, happier life. One thing I'm wondering about, you know, obviously this move towards consumerism, it's very good for the patient, it's good for the consumer, yet it also puts a tremendous burden on that consumer, some of whom, like you just said, might be more adept at using technology than others. If something like Livongo Health is really high touch in offering personal care, yet also has that foundation of we want you to connect to the web, we want to be able to serve you um, information in a way that's in a digital health experience. This might be a new thing for some folks to, who've maybe never encountered that digital health. How is it that you try to offer that high touch, you know, personal experience, yet also manage the person who may not be adept at using technology to get the best of that care experience? Kate, it's a great, great question. Thank you. And we believe that the best technology is technology that you don't see. Technology should really be magical. And when we make phone calls, we don't worry about the fact that it's going over multiple networks and it's connecting between different networks, maybe even to someone who's overseas. Right. What we want is technology that's simple and easy to use and works for us and provides us with a service that we can use that allows us to do something that maybe we couldn't do before without the technology. And so Livongo Health is in the same vein. If you're an individual who has diabetes, you may be testing. If you're a type 1 um, individual, a few times a day. If you have type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. it might be a few times a week. But you're using a glucometer, and that glucometer today, in many cases, is a dumb device. Yeah. That data might be made accessible to others. You might sync it with a computer. But more often than not, it doesn't time stamp it the right way, date stamp it the right way. But what if your glucometer was connected to a network? It was connected to the cloud and every time you tested, all that data made it into a smart cloud mm -hmm. and the solution was something that was actually able to give you um, insights into your behaviors so that you can make the right modifications to help improve your condition. And so we believe that providing technology-enabled services that are working for you. Think of it as OnStar for your health. Mm -hmm. You're always being monitored. Someone is watching over you and providing you with that uh, guardian angel-like service that's allowing you to get the nature of, of your condition under control and be able to give you a solution that doesn't require a lot of interaction with technology, just do what you normally do. Right, and what I'm hearing you say too is what you get in return for maybe that one encounter where you're having to, to use that technology, what you're receiving back from it is so valuable that you're looking forward to being able to use it again. So it really is you know, just kind of reframing that patient experience in a way that the end result is they truly are better able to manage their chronic Kate, that's condition. A, Kate, that's a, a wonderful comment because 
what we hope is that use of this type of technology uh, becomes the same way that you think about um, using Uber to hail a taxi, right? You know, the experience of going out and flagging a taxi and, and kind of competing with other people in the street to do that, if you've been in New York or Chicago right. or other metropolitan areas where that's a challenge. But think about now, you want a service, you summon that service and it comes to you. And what we view Livongo Health as doing is essentially delivering to you what you need when you need it to allow just right, just in time information to be shared so that you're in a position to be told, hey, you're doing great things, keep it up. Or you might need some help. Maybe you need to adjust your medication or you do need an appointment, come in. Right. Sometimes you'll be told you're doing so well, you don't need an appointment, you don't need to come in. Right. And that's going right. to feel pretty good and reinforcing to you as a patient who's compliant. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Lee, looking back at your experience, I know that you have been in the innovation field for quite some time. You know, you know a good pitch when you see, when you hear one. You know a bad pitch when you hear one too. So, for our folks out here who are watching, who would love to have an audience with you, what is it that you would say are essential to include in the pitch that you would be interested in exploring further? So we meet with a lot of companies um, who are looking for capital, um, and we meet with a lot of early stage companies um, in particular. And, and I think what's important to us is um, it's first all about the people. Uh, we really want to understand the team, what drives them, what motivated them to pursue whatever it is that they're working on. Um, and too often what you hear a lot about is the product, and we have a solution. Just because something can be built doesn't mean it should sure. be built. And so we try to make sure that we understand what need are you trying to fulfill, um, who will be the ultimate user of that solution, mm -hmm. and why would it be compelling to them and need it. I I'm sorry to use this example, but uh, we had a fellow who we worked with at one point in time who loved the analogy and said, I know I could build a nuclear-powered bologna slicer. <laughs> but would anybody buy it? I mean, the technology exists to build something like that. And so we really focus on the team. Are they good people? Because irrespective of whether the product is a wonderful product, mm -hmm. if you don't have confidence in that team, yeah. and things change over time. And so a company may need to pivot one way or another. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you have really competent, qualified people, and then also a solution that's going to meet a need, and, and one that doesn't have to be first, but really is going to focus on great execution. So that's where we, that's where we really concentrate our Terrific. questions and efforts. Terrific advice. Well, another thing that I found really compelling about you uh, when I was researching is your personality just suffuses your, your biography um, on your website, your LinkedIn profile. What is it that motivates you to be Lee Shapiro, who brings his total self to work every day and just is um, as easy to talk to as anybody, but is in really in command of a pretty big position. Tell me what motivates you and you know, how, do you, how do you get through your day with a smile on your face? You know, um, every day I think it's important to feel like uh, you get out of bed and you um, want to do what you're doing. And I really enjoy um, hearing about new solutions, working to help bring new solutions to market in areas that we're passionate about. Um, you talked about this earlier with regard to healthcare and, and education, and in some respects energy as well. We think that those are significant issues that can really benefit from having passionate people involved in trying to find solutions for us. Mm -hmm. And so if we can play a small role in helping organizations advance their offerings in those areas, we feel like we're helping to do something about addressing really important issues. And hopefully we can help scale those businesses and if we do that successfully, then we're delivering something of value to a lot of people. And that's something that gets me out of bed in the morning. Right, right. Well, I think that altruism is, is matched with, obviously, quite an intellect. And um, I'm so grateful that you were here with us today in the Guidewell Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock, and we will be back with a new live feed at 3 p.m. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kate.